recording just now in advance of the service, our fourth Sunday in Advent communion service, December the 20th, 2020. I'll be right with you in a minute or two. Don't be in a hurry, Jack.
Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. O Lord, raise up, we pray thee, thy power, and come among us, and with great might succor us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are sore let and hindered in running the race that is set before us, thy bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which thy son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost now and ever. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Philippians, beginning at the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Oh. Uh -huh. 
391. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 16th. Nope, I'm sorry. <laughs> Start again. The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of, of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. This is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate 
by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. so blessed it's you this morning that you're here god bless you and uh for those at home oh gosh that's very bright isn't it nasty okay yeah there may be oh no it's gonna be bad we got a, a sunbeam going uh i dreamed there was a sunbeam or something but i think you're gonna just get blinded by this well okay let's go this way no worse how did this happen this is like interesting. Well, okay, we'll just do this. All right, bless you. So we are on Zoom. We are here in, pre in the presence of God and all services here. And our door downstairs, as you know, is open. Order calendars are $6 a piece uh, to cover our costs. And the history of our Anglican province is here also for $7.50. You can get those. Our Christmas Eve Mass will be at 7.30 p.m. this Thursday night, Christmas Eve. We'll have no Wednesday service, obviously, because we're going to be right back here Thursday night for Christmas Eve. We'll be on Zoom, and we will be here physically present as well, singing and celebrating the Lord's birth together. Praise God for that. All right. Um, and the next Sunday, we'll have two Masses, one for St. John's Day early and one for St. John Day with music at our normal times, 8 and 10.30. So be prepared for that. We will be back to two Masses a Sunday. Those who come will receive by intention. All right. Uh, let's sing hymn number 440. Hymn 440. <laughs> See 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophets Isaiah. In this season of Advent, we join that state of expectation for Messiah to arrive and to solve all our troubles that the Jews of the first century felt, the history of the Jewish people, risen from a man of faith, leading his flock of sheep and goats away from his family, led in turn by a God who went before him, who spoke to him, promised him a family in his old age, and the man believed. Generations of nomadic descendants relocated for survival to Egypt, the most powerful kingdom of all, turned to slaves for the building of pyramids and cities, oppressed until another promise with a new man of faith came with mighty signs and the near destruction of that empire. A dramatic escape through a gap in the sea, fire on the mountain, hardship and sorrow, hostile tribes threatening, and a law given on tablets of stone. These people again found God in the wilderness. The wilderness held the mysteries of divine encounter. Time and many disasters awaited them yet. A great dynasty of their own came and fell to ruin. Empires of other nations overshadowed them in successive waves and this final pagan power me, held terror through the science of warfare and extinction as a real threat. People remembering the better days of their holy history clung to the promises of a better, higher hero yet to be and the signs attending to his eventual appearing. In a great compilation of prophetic visions and divine words from a man eight centuries before, during the Assyrian wars that destroyed the Northern Kingdom, Isaiah wrote of this anointed one, a son born to a virgin, born for us, a king, a divine person, one filled with spiritual gifts, yet a suffering servant, a man rejected, brutalized and scandalously misused until he would die, yet be exalted for his sacrifice after taking away the punishment of all our sins. When was this to be? It was not in Isaiah's gift to set dates. That was for others. But the sign of Messiah's arrival was alluded to in a chapter he wrote that echoes down through the years. Wonderful words of hope and promise. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. We so long for that comfort. Speak tender words to Jerusalem that its hardships are ended, all wrongs made right, as its payment for sin has been re received twice. Would we not want to know that our sins are all washed clean and God wants to comfort us again with his voice? Where is that voice? It's back in the wilderness. A wilderness, sometimes referred to as the desert, means an unsettled place where no civilization is. People don't live out there. It might be sand or dirt and tumbleweeds or rock and scrub, but the coyotes, lions and scorpions thrive there. Hot in summer, cold in winter, Nomadic shepherds will cross it, graze its meager fields, then move on. The wilderness is not hospitable, but that's its beauty. People aren't there. The noise and issues of society are absent and you can simplify things enough to see the pure truth. It's out in the wilderness that Abraham, Jacob, Moses and David all met God in powerful ways. It was again in the wilderness that John came baptizing, preaching, repentance, 
getting ready for the one who was about to appear. John was questioned about who or what he pretended to be. Are you that prophet? Moses had written about a prophet like himself who would come. No, said John. Are you Messiah? Clearly not. Elijah returned? No, you don't understand. Then summoning up the power of the prophet, John quoted Isaiah. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Clear a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised. Every mountain and hill will be lowered. Steep places will be made level. Rough places will be made smooth. Then the Lord's glory will be revealed and all people will see it together. Everyone knew that scripture. It meant a leveling of artificial layers and obstacles that humans devise. The low places will be built back up. All that lifts itself higher than it deserves will be mowed down. Like a road crew making a highway in the desert. This work in human society will change the landscape. What was rough will be made smooth. A path for one to come. Welcome him. Make yourself ready. You are that wilderness needing to get straightened out so that Messiah, when he comes, will enter you too. Isaiah says Almighty God will come to rule. His reward is with him, and the people he has won arrive ahead of him. God, like a shepherd, will make a flock of those who love him, carrying lambs in his arms. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or instructed him as his advisor? Isaiah drops a series of rhetorical questions, testing our answers as we know God is in charge, has all wisdom, and his plan is up higher than we can see it. In a discourse like God gave to Job, the vast quality of God's power and wisdom is contrasted with the insignificance of human endeavor we must abase ourselves to him. He has all of it. And we are fortunate to be chosen by him. To whom then can you compare me? He asks. Who is my equal? Asks the Holy One. Look at the sky and see. Who created these things? Who brings out the stars one by one? He calls them all by name. So don't kvetch. Don't complain that God ignores you or doesn't know what you're up to. He isn't tired, limited, or ignorant. And likewise, the strength of any who wait with hope for him will be renewed. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and won't become weary. They will walk and won't grow tired. John's ministry in the wilderness may have only lasted months, a couple of years at most, but his fame went out through the Hebrew children, drawing many to come to Jordan and seek the man in animal skins, eating locusts and honey from the wilderness bees. His voice cried in the wilderness, repent, the kingdom is coming. One arrives soon, whose shoes I have no right to unbuckle. I baptize you with water today, but he will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Spirit. Repent, return to the Lord, stop your sinful ways, confess to him today, and your sins can be forgiven. John, like that road crew, was cutting a level highway in the wilderness for the king he knew was coming. That office of being the herald of Messiah was his one job for God, and he knew it and he fulfilled it the voice crying in the wilderness. On a day appointed, Jesus stepped down into that river with John. It confused the rustic prophet, and he knew his cousin. But this was epic. His cousin was the one. As Jesus submerged under the water, then rose up, John heard the father's voice in that wilderness speak of his son and saw a light descending much as a dove coming down and landed on Jesus. It was the sign. 
John declared him, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the whole world's sins. He will increase as I diminish. Into that wilderness then, Jesus was driven by the Spirit, newly laid on him. Forty days he fasted and he prayed, seeking his mission, learning the things he needed to know now to fulfill his destiny. It was a lot. What things Jesus knew from childhood and what he learned along the way are matters of conjecture. In his incarnation, he was always God and man, always the eternal son from before creation, from eternity without beginning. But incarnate, who knows how his human mind worked with the facts of his divinity. The epistle to the Hebrews says that though he was God's son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. The Son of God learned in his human experience and existence something all eternity did not reveal, an experience of cruel hardship, suffering, rejection, and pain, willingly submitted to in obedience for the salvation of the souls of others. It was the first time God had ever taken such a role to that extent. In my office here, I have a small statue of Jesus standing and crying. The shortest verse of the Bible, Jesus wept, is depicted in an artist's rendering that reveals to us a side of our Savior that we seldom see or think of. He cries. The voice in the wilderness crying is not always preaching, but simply wailing the pain of the human problem. His creatures, his best work in making life and beauty turned its back on him and walked away. Freedom made that possible, that terrible gift that was required in order that the sacred gift of love might have space to manifest. Instead of love, humans wove other myths and legends to themselves, sacrificed unclean things to detestable demon gods, and died in millions without hope, without him. And God wept. Take us away from our wide avenues. Remove us from our heated living rooms. Sweep us out of our political wranglings and media heated tides and times away to the wilderness. We could actually go there. People do go camping in order to feel that experience. But you don't need a mountain or forest or desert or gully to to strip away all the distractions. You only need to come here, an altar, a few steps up, a simple meal of bread and wine, a moment of stillness. Forget what the priest is saying with his back turned on you, his face to God's presence for a moment. You are at God's mountain, the burning bush, the water gushing from a stone a river warmed by the Judean sun near Bethel and under a juniper tree. And a still, small voice whispers to you, why are you here? What are you seeking? What has brought you out to me? God asks these things, but he knows the answers better than we do. He asks so that we might ask ourselves and come to understand our motives. The world around us masks those issues of life, essential issues, and makes us think it's only about entertainment. It's about presence. It's about music. It's about travel. It's about territory. But it's not. Strip it all away and let your soul enter the wilderness, that un uninhabited reality that we all have deep in our hearts, where we simple may, simply may go to meet our God. He's there, perhaps he's crying. He has waited so long. You've been busy, too busy. You've made excuses. You've resented him for one reason or other. You've been hurting, but unable to cry. Go out to him and cry with him. That voice in the wilderness has finally been heard and you find him now, listen. What is he saying to you? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, amen.
Now remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Blessed sacrament is offered this day in the name of God. Please remember in your prayers the sick, the aged, the suffering of our fellow Christians, our families, and friends. Turn your places to the Mass of Mass um, for Pan Gregory Gregory this evening. He is there in his glory and is in the hospital this morning with um, chest pain. So I pray for God and uh, for Pan to be able to see him. So we want to make sure to pray for Pan Gregory Gregory this evening. suddenly struck with cancer just about a month ago and went down very quickly and was taken from us Thursday night. So when you slip back by then. That's the 18th. That's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. That's no 18th was Friday night. It's the 20th, yeah. That's Friday night. Yeah, that was So God rest your soul. Uh, he's assured of her joy in Christ and we believe with him too. But we need to pray. May the soul of Denise and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. May light perpetual shine upon them, and may the blessings of paradise be their portion. O oh Lord, we beseech that you remember the soul of Denise, our sister. Amen. Pray also for the lost, to especially for Viraj and for um, all the atheists and prodigals, for Joshua, Mark, Sasha, 
Liz, Keith, Cheryl, Liz, Katie, Heidi, Bishan, Heather, James, Dan, Megan, Gary, Holly, Mikhail, Scott, Jane. For all terrorists who turn back from their dark purpose to the light of God and Christ. For God's guidance for uh, John and his family, for Donald, Ross, Isaac, Julie, Randy, Stevie, and Janet. For special intentions, we pray for Bob. Uh, who is mourning his wife's passage. He's a pastor uh, in Oregon, and he is carrying his great burden right now. We pray as well for Jamal and his family, for Louis, for, uh, for Jesse, for Randy and his family, for David, for Gobi's Cafe, for the um, SDA, Korean Sovereign Joy Churches, all here at State, uh, with our building. We pray for all firefighters and police officers and EMS workers, first responders with the dispatch. Who are facing the danger and the difficulties of everyday life on the edge. May they all serve honor and come home safe. We pray for America's return to Christ, for our Iran mission, which is completing the transmission of the ninth season and beginning to, uh, to well film the next two seasons, 10 and 11, of uh, this winter and spring. God's grace and blessing over that work and inspiration for its author. And star and terrific, um, a wonderful witness to the Iranian people. For a women's resource clinic, for the COVID 19 recovery in America and throughout the world, and for all of God's purposes in us and through us as He wills, may we do with His blessing and direction. We pray as well for those in armed service, especially Ted Gavin Douglas and Canaan. For all travelers, we pray especially for Mark and his mom who are down in San Diego right now flying up here shortly to keep her here for the holidays. But it go well with them. We pray for our children and youth, especially the St. Augustine's and the province of Christ. Now on birthdays, we are praying for the birthday of Alexis and of Alice, uh, both in this compass of the week. So walk, watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase, bless and guide them. Wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up with your hope that they fall, and that their hearts may have peace, which passes all understanding and body all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for all those Christian marriage and their anniversaries to bless us all. December 11th. Well, we get Thanksgiving. For one thing, the um, Dickie Jackson's brother-in-law, David, uh, we were praying for a very difficult health crisis. Looks like he's come through that well, so we're giving thanks to God for what seems to be a relief from that. We are also thankful for Jesus, the light of the world, and the who born as of this time for us has given us every kind of hope and every kind of joy. Um, may we receive it and celebrate with each other. We pray for one another, we thank um, God for this church and this, this congregation and pray for the whole state of Christ in the church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially John, our Archbishop, and Donald, our Bishop, and other ministers, especially Brian and David Deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, 
need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of a heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to almighty God, devoutly kneel. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sin to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ says unto all who truly turn to him. <clears throat> Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, that if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord, let us give thanks unto our Lord God, it is me and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou that of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in this holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to, the, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching me that we and all of us who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaidens, especially with Denise, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and art rest and the sleep of peace, to these, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen deliver us we beseech thee o lord from all evils past present and to come and at the intercession of the blessed glorious and ever virgin mary mother of god with thy other blessed apostles peter and paul and of andrew and all thy saints favorably grant peace in our time that by the help of thy mercy we may ever be kept free from sin and safe from all disquietude. In the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Don't start it just yet, Jack. But we got to be able to sing it. I can't see it and sing it at the same time. Do this. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for the doubt is about safe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, 
and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, that as we have now received thy gifts, so by continually drawing near to this mystery, we may set forward the work of our salvation. And we beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought into the glory of his resurrection. Through the same, Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Again, number two, here it is.
God, Heavenly Father, who by thy Son, Jesus Christ, has promised to all those who seek thy kingdom and the righteousness thereof, all things necessary to their bodily sustenance. Send us, we beseech thee, in this our necessity, further rain and showers, that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to thy honor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.